guys and welcome back to another All Heart video. For today's video, I thought we would do something a little bit differently. So instead of showing you our shelf setup and activities that are geared more towards like my daughter or activities geared more towards my son, I thought I would just show you our day-to-day -day routine. Basically, what it is that we do all day in this playroom from the moment that we walk in. I just wanna go ahead and give you some sorts of ideas of the activities that my children naturally gravitate towards, the activities that are of interest to them at this particular time, and just activities that are geared more towards that two and a half and five-year-old time frame. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. So the wooden knob cylinders are a favorite in our playroom for both my daughter and my son. And I decided to just keep them on the floor here just because they are a little bit heavy. So I didn't want to have my daughter really struggling to remove these off a shelf or anything like that. And as you can see, she brings it over towards the rug. She arranges it in this square and she removes all of the cylinders to the center. And then she slowly works her way around trying to figure out which cylinder goes into a particular slot. Now, this activity is perfect for hand and eye coordination and fine motor skills, but it's also really good to improve upon their concentration and their focus. Another reason why I love Montessori materials is because they are self-correcting. So if she makes a mistake, you can see that she will remove the cylinder and try and figure out which slot it's supposed to be in. You can see that my daughter's taking a little break to go and blow her nose. We do have like a self-care area in our playroom where they can either wash their hands, use hand sanitizer, get a drink, blow their nose, or anything else that they'll need. And as soon as she was finished, she just goes right back to finishing working on her cylinders. So my son has started taking piano lessons and he's been taking them for about two months now and we do it all online through Zoom. But he is absolutely in love with piano and he takes it upon himself to practice and that is one of the first thing he does as soon as we walk into the playroom. So the different locks is still a favorite for my son and I know I've shown you this a time or two, but it is perfect for problem solving, perfect for their fine motor skills and their hand and eye coordination and he just absolutely loves playing with his locks. So here you can see my daughter went to go grab one of her rugs so that she can set out all of her little spring flowers. So this was a gift that was gifted to my daughter during Christmas and I'm really glad that I hung on to it because it was the perfect spring activity and she absolutely loves being able to place all of the pieces together and she is able to create her flower arrangements however she wants. So again, this is perfect for that hand and eye coordination and those fine motor skills and it also teaches her about the different parts of the flower. So if you're looking at more spring activities, I'll make sure to leave the link for that video down below. It's got so many wonderful spring activities for your little ones. So this is a Montessori braiding board and my son has gotten really into reading books about creating different types of knots. So right now he's just creating a simple braid, but a, it's really, really good for those fine motor skills, hand and eye coordination, and also recognizing patterns. As you can see, he's going green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, and repeating the pattern until he is all the way done. Here you can see that he is creating a different type of knot, but again, he is following a pattern. So now he is going yellow, red, green, yellow red green 
this activity really keeps him occupied for quite a while and once he's done finishing one type of knot he goes on to working on a different kind So here my son went to go grab the sound cylinders. He's gotten really, really good at being able to match the corresponding sounds in each of the little cylinders. And he opens up the box, makes sure that he lines up the coordinating colors. And then from there, he'll go one by one and see if he can match the corresponding sound. So it is perfect for working on the senses he really does have to concentrate and focus on each of the different cylinders to make sure that he matches the appropriate sound so he really really loves this activity and it does take a lot of concentration for him to be able to match the corresponding pairs but it is a really really nice activity for your toddlers and also for your older kids as well As you can see, once he's done with the activity, he is placing the cylinders back into their corresponding little boxes. He does this carefully, and both of my kids are really good about placing all of the materials back where they're supposed to go in order to keep the playroom nice and tidy and orderly. So this was another one of our spring activities and my daughter is absolutely obsessed with all of the life cycle cards and objects. So as you can see, she first starts off with laying down all of the cards and making sure that she places the life cycles in the appropriate order. Once she has decided that the order is correct, then she'll go ahead and match the little objects with the corresponding cards. Show me the bee. Which one's the bee? This one. Yeah, that's the bee. So my son has an entire area dedicated to his work on the human anatomy. This was a puzzle of the human skeleton and it is a fairly large size. So right now he is just placing all of the bones in order and then once he is finished with that he will take all of the individual labels and he will label all of the individual bones. So this took him a little while to memorize but he's pretty much got all of the bones down and he really loves being able to take them all down and then reset them back up the next day. I really love the size of this magnetic puzzle and it's just a wonderful hands-on way for him to be able to learn all of the different bone parts and names. So 
So while my son was busy working on that human skeleton, my daughter was just sitting here quietly reading one of her books. And this is one of her favorite things. She makes sure to bring her little stuffed doll with her and she sits her next to her and then she'll choose out a book and she will just sit there and read. So this is the Montessori stamp game and I really love this game because you are able to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So right now my son is working on a division problem in the thousands. So I believe the number is 4,215 divided by three. So you can see that he's lined up three little pawns because he is dividing by three. And now he's just setting up the quantity on the side. So he's got four of the little thousand stamps, two of the hundreds, one tens, and then five of the single units. And now he is dividing them equally. Now, as you can see, he's left with one of the little thousand stamps. So because he can't divide that equally, he's going to exchange it for 10 of the 100 pieces. After he does that, he's going to line them up. And again, he is going to divide them individually and equally between the three pawns. So as you can see, all of those were divided equally and now he's left with this 10. Since he can't divide the 10 equally, he exchanges it for 10 ones. And he's doing the same thing. After he gets those 10 ones, he is dividing them equally between the three different pawns. And once he finishes that, he adds up the quantity under one pond and then he gets his answer. So now my daughter is rolling out her rug for a different activity and she wanted to work on color matching. So I believe this is box two of the color matching discs. So all I did was line up one set of the colors on one side and then it's my daughter's job to be able to match the appropriate colors. And each time she does, she also names the colors as well. So it's a wonderful way for her to be able to identify and learn all of the different colors, not just by sight, but also by name. We have all three of the color sorting boxes. The first one has all of the primary colors, the yellow, red, and the blue. The second box has all of the different colors, and the third box has a graduation of colors, so she would have to sort them from darkest to lightest. Now that third box she is still working on, but this box she knows very, very well. Once she finished her activity, she is placing all of the discs back in order and she places this back on her shelf so that she can utilize it again either later on that day, which does happen, or she can use it again the following day.
So this next activity is inspired by the pink Montessori tower that is so famous and iconic in all of the Montessori rooms. Now this one is just a little bit bigger than that, but it does have the same 10 squares um, and it is a lot more affordable. So if you are looking for a more affordable option, this is a really good one. So in between activities or towards the end of the day, my children love to just be a little bit more active. So they're either climbing on the little rainbow bridge or they're going up and down the Pickler Triangle or they are playing hopscotch or something to that nature. But it is important that they get up and they are at least moving around at some point during the day. And that will do it for this video. I hope that this gave you a few more ideas of activities that you can incorporate in your playroom for your little ones. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like, make sure to subscribe, and remember to ring that notification bell so that you are notified of when I next post a video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you back here very, very soon. Thank you.